How close is too close when it comes to relations between governments and the tobacco industry? In the Netherlands, politicians are being accused of allowing powerful tobacco lobby to exercise undue influence over smoking policy. The result? While most countries have been tightening their anti-smoking legislation, the Netherlands has been doing the opposite. Anna Holligan reports. This is a Philip Morris factory. It's the biggest tobacco company in the world. All around us, machines are churning out cigarettes. They employ more than a thousand workers here and produce more than 80 billion cigarettes a year. Our guide, Matthias Peters, says it's an important part of the Dutch economy. If you speak about excise tax revenue, uh, last year the entire tobacco industry in the Netherlands contributed some 2.4 billion euros. Roughly half of that, I would say, uh, would come from Philip Morris. Three years ago, the Dutch government, like many others across Europe, banned smoking in bars. Since then, though, ministers in the Netherlands have been loosening the laws that prevent people from lighting up inside. Today, it's okay for small bars like this one, with just one owner working, to let their customers have a cigarette with their beer. Meanwhile, anti-smoking groups have had their government funding dramatically cut, some to the extent that they no longer receive any support from the state. Smoke, smoke, smoke that cigarette. And gone are these disturbing anti-smoking adverts, warning of the aging effects of smoking. You've got to have another cigarette. All this has led some experts to the conclusion that the reduction in restrictions is as a result of improper links between the Dutch government and the tobacco industry. My name is Orno van Schijk. I'm professor of preventive medicine. It is absolutely irresponsible what they are doing. There is a regular contact between the Department of, uh, of Health and the tobacco industry. So that is completely against the WHO convention. The World Health Organization's International Tobacco Control Treaty bans any communication which might allow the tobacco industry to influence government policy. But Anna Mulder, a member of the Dutch Parliament involved in formulating health policies, admits he does speak to the tobacco lobby. It's a legal product, so I think it's normal that they see contact about the government policy. Uh, for myself, I speak to everybody. That's what I'm doing. I don't have any problem with people who are lobbying. So you I'm, do talk to the yeah, tobacco industry? I talk to everybody. But Professor Uno von Schaik argues that just because a group has an interest in an area of policy, it doesn't mean the government should consult them. If you want to control malaria, you don't invite the mosquito to negotiate with you on these issues. I mean, it is so non-logical to do so. Ultimately, politician Anna Mulder believes that people should be free to make their own decisions. Smoking is not good for your health, but at the end it's people's own choice if they want to smoke or not. We have striking a balance between giving people a free choice and discouraging smoking. I've come to a smoking cessation helpline centre in The Hague. Researchers predict that without tougher anti-smoking policies and more help for those who want to quit, over the next 30 years, almost a million people in the Netherlands will die prematurely due to tobacco-related diseases. Here, they've had their government funding completely withdrawn. Dr. Savriti Russo blames the government's health policy for her patients' suffering. They're left on their own. I have people who are smoking for over 40 years, who cannot work anymore, who have to go inside the hospital for treatment, you know, to breathe, and who live in welfare, who only have a little bit of money spent on the end of the week, and what do they do? They buy their cigarettes. They really need help, because it's really, really difficult for them to quit. You're on your own. That's the message. And I think that's something to be very ashamed of. Despite this, the numbers of smokers in the Netherlands has actually fallen in the last year. But the fear among anti-smoking campaigners is that if the government cutbacks continue, there'll be an increase in the numbers of smokers and in smoking-related deaths. Anna Holligan reporting there from the Netherlands. It's coming up to 7.30 GMT.